Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our AV8B and we're looking at a cold start procedure. Now it's quite a big procedure so get comfy and we'll get started. So first thing is we need to align the INS navigation system. Without that we can't navigate and we can't really do anything in fact. So from the cold start we're going to go battery here on right mouse click there. We're then going to contact uh, the ground crew and we're going to do that using that key there, communication menu, so communicate. I'm going to press F8 there for ground crew, ground electric power on, Chief, on ground and power. wait. Copy. Ground power is now on. It's given us ground power and it's given that the SINS data cable is now connected so we can, this is going to allow us to align our aircraft. So. We've got that on. And next, what we're going to want to do is move our stick out of the way. And the mast and nav mode, we want to change to align. We can, we've got C or we've got ground. So we're obviously on the C here. We're going to click C, right click once. Next, we're going to put uh, the... I'm just going to close the window because it's noisy. Uh, we need to turn this brightness knob on the right or the left MFD. But I'm going to go for the right, either left click and drag or mouse scroll wheel. The HSI, the EHSD. And we can see that we've got a timer going on now. And that will time while the INS aligns. It takes about three minutes. So we're just going to leave that to do its thing. And when it's finished, it'll all be aligned. And our nav and our HUD and everything will work. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to run through my usual checklist. Now, the uh, checklist has changed slightly over the different variations, updates of the Harrier. So I'm just going to do the all-encompassing comprehensive one, just in case things change again slightly um, in the next few months so that this is still a relevant video. So battery is on, checking generator is on in the up position, and yes, it is. Next, we're going to look left fuel, sh fuel shutoff lever here, and we're going to left click down, and the deck switch is going to go up. And the oxygen switch, oxy, is going to go up. Next are the left and right fuel pumps and fuel proportion. I make sure they're all in the up position. So right click, fuel pump right, right click, fuel pump left. Just double check the fuel proportion is right and it is. So now we've got fuel, we can start the engine. So engine start over here. Left click once. Warning, warning. We can turn warning. the master warning off. We don't need that. And now the engine is going to spool. We're going to wait for the RPM here to rise and peak at uh, 092, I think it is. Fast forward that because we can. Okay, stop there. Next, we need to do the uh, find a little lever on the back side of the throttle lever here. Now, it's really hard to find. In fact, it's almost impossible to do. So, what you do is hover roughly where my mouse cursor is there to find it. And this can take a second or two. There it is, throttle cutoff lever. And you just left click that. That's that done. Next, we're going to see. Uh, well, oh, sorry. Next, now we're going to move the throttle ever so slightly forward. That's as far as it let us, let us move it anyway. And now the RPM is going to rise to, I think it settles about 285. Okay, while well, that's settling, we're going to check some more switches. Check pitch, roll and yaw are all up. And they are in this particular update, so that's good. Check Q feel is up, that's good. RPS and yaw is up. So all of the switches are already up. But if they're not, then make them up. Flaps, ensure they're in the centre in auto. So that's just, I like to just move it about to make sure it's in the centre. Next, we need to arm the ejection seat. So a big lever around here, just click on the end of that. Armed. We're going to do our displays next, our UFC brightness display, click and drag or mouse scroll wheel. I like to turn my radio volumes on in case I forget to do them later. Radio volumes on, my HUD brightness on, my other MFD on. What we can see is it's been three minutes now or three minutes and five seconds and it's aligned, it's okay. And um, another way of check so you get the full, you know, moving map here on the HSI. And another way you can check is that the HUD, you've got all of your information populating the HUD. So now we're going to change our INS master mode from align to nav, which is our basic use of the nav system. While we're down here, we're going to turn our FLIR on in case we need to use our FLIR at some point. We're going to turn our dual mode tracker on in case we use that. And we're going to turn our pitot heat on just in case. It just seems, tends to be good practice. Next, we're going to change some of our tactical stuff. So our RWR, we're going to move it into the on position. So our left, uh, either mouse scroll will left click and drag. Expendables, chap and flare into the auto position, our ECM into the standby position, whether we've got a DCM pod or not, uh, we're going to keep that in standby. Again, just good practice. And the only other thing I can think of is uh, our external light master switch, this chap here. Make sure we go to the fully on position, right click, and that's it, a fully aligned and started Harrier, all ready to go and arm up and whatnot. Take note, at the time of making this video, this is February 2019, the 
INS alignment is bugged. The only place it works on is the Tawara carrier like this. If you try and do the INS alignment on a different carrier, it won't work. If you try and do the INS alignment on a ground airfield, it won't work. Obviously, this bug is going to be fixed at some point, but just bear in mind that that is a thing that you have to think about. Okay, I hope that helps and see you later.